Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can log users information on exceptions in Blaze WebAssembly applications. In the last couple of videos we talked about how we can log exceptions in the database, how we can globally handle these exceptions and show a nice message instead of showing that light yellow bar and showing stack trace in the browser console. Now I would like to also store users information whenever I get exception. I would like to store current users user ID in the database so that whenever exception happens and my user calls me to figure out why the exception is happening, I can quickly write a query by putting user ID in the where condition and order by one or created date in order to get the latest exception which is happening for that particular user. If your application is huge, you don't want to scroll through a lot of logs, you would like to put a filter condition which will give you where exactly the exception is happening pretty quickly. Like I said, if you haven't watched previous videos, this video won't make sense, so please watch the video where we are logging our exceptions in the database and how we are handling exceptions globally for a Blazor WebAssembly application. So for this video, I have already added a column user ID in my logs table and I have scaffolded that table in my server project so that I could get that user ID in my project. And this is where we would like to store users information whenever we get an exception in our application. Let's go ahead and check what all places we are getting exception. I'm going to log in into my application with Julius Caesar's user ID and I'm getting an exception on contacts page. You can see that something has gone wrong and then I'm getting an exception on settings page. There also it's showing something has gone wrong. If I go to my controller in contacts controller, here I am getting contacts count and I'm throwing index out of range exception. And if I go to my settings page, which is on the client project, if I go to my settings page and you can see that whenever I'm initializing the component, I'm throwing an exception here, which is actually handled by a global exception handler and that I have covered in the previous episode. And if I go to my database and try and run this query, you can see that those exceptions are now getting logged in the database, but the user ID is not getting logged yet. So let's go ahead and add that user ID with these exceptions which are happening. So for logging these exceptions in the database, I have used application logger provider on the server project which is configured on startup class here. So if I go to my startup class, I have two methods, configure services and configure. And in configure, we are getting the blazing chat context, which is the database context, which helps us log information or exceptions in the database. Just like this, we can also get HTTP context accessor, which will give us the information about the current user for this application. So first we'll have to add that as a server. So I'm going to go to my startup class here and in the configure services method, I'm going to write services dot add HTTP context accessor as a service. And then we can get this as required service and I can pass that in application logger provider, which will help me log users information, current users information in the database. So just like I'm getting the required service for placing chat context, I would like to get required service for HTTP context accessor. And I'm gonna name it as HTTP context accessor. I'm gonna try and pass this to my application logger. I'm gonna pass that application logger this is going to throw an error because we have not handled that in the constructor so let's go ahead and handle that in the constructor i'm going to name it as http context 
we will create a read only property which is going to be underscore http context accessor and then i'm going to create a read only property now here we have a database logger which is getting returned on create logger and i would like to also pass http context accessor here this also definition does not have http context so just like what we did for blazing chat context which is the database context that's what i'm doing for http context accessor so that i could get information about the current user so i'm going to create read a read only field here and then i'm going to use that http context accessor in order to get current user so this is the method where we are logging exceptions for that user for that application so let's go ahead and get the current user for that i'm gonna say var user id is going to be equal to underscore http context i'm gonna check if it is null or not and then i'm gonna get the http context of this application so usually you can access http context only in the controllers but this this is a database logger and i would like to use this HTTP context and I would like to get use this information and the information that I would like to get is the claim types name identifier and then I'm going to say please get that value so the reason why I got name identifier is because if you go to our controller in user controller wherever I'm logging user I'm using name identifier as a claim type which is actually the user id of the user who is logged in into the system so that way we could get the user id by accessing its value now let's convert this string into long so that we could store that into the database so i'm going to say log or the user id which is a nullable long property and then i'm going to convert that string into into in 64 so that we could store that into the database now let's run this and see if our user id of the current user is getting stored in the database or not for that i'm gonna go to my application here and then i'm gonna log in with john smith and then go to my contacts page you can see that i'm getting an exception and now if i go to my database and then refresh this page you can see that user id of john smith is getting logged in my database i'm not getting any user id on the client side and we'll fix that in a minute but for the server exceptions which was index out of bound array exception I'm getting that user ID so that I can put that in bad condition and get that user ID's exceptions, latest exceptions. Now let's try to log in with someone else. I'm gonna try and log in with Julius Caesar and then go to contacts page. Julius Caesar is also getting that exception. If I refresh the page, you can see that Julius Caesar's user ID is also getting logged in the database. Or that exception on the server side so this is how you can get the user id on the server side let's try to do the same thing on the client side on the client side if you want to get the current user you'll have to use custom authentication state provider that we used when we added authentication for our blazing chat application so here i have custom authentication state provider which is inheriting from authentication state provider which gives us current authentication state for our application and this is what i'm going to use in order to get the current user for my client application so if i want to use that i'm going to go to my program.cs program.cs i'm going to make sure that i'm adding authentication state provider which is custom authentication state provider for my application I'm going to add that as a service and then I'm going to configure my logging wherever I'm adding application logger provider. Now here, just like we're getting HTTP client as a service from our build service provider, I would like to get 
authentication state provider as a service too and that's what i would like to pass in my application logger provider just like what we did on the server side we'll have to do this on the client side too but we'll have to pass authentication state provider not http context to access it so i'm going to grab that and then pass that in in here this is going to throw an error i'm gonna go to its definition and say authentication state provider is what we're expecting here and then here i'm gonna say underscore authentication state provider is equal to authentication state provider create a read only property and we would like to pass that in our database logger and then database logger will start throwing an exception an error and then i would like to go handle that in its constructor and then i would like to create a read only property which is going to be for authentication state provider now here we'll use authentication state provider in order to get the user id the current user's user id before logging information in the database so this is what we use we use http client in order to push our logs to the server so that server could store these logs in the database so we'll have to use authentication state provider here in order to get the current user and it gets a little tricky here because this log is not an async method this log is more like fire and forget method so we'll have to get the user id where the user id is an async method so it kind of gets tricky but we'll handle that so let's say if i want to get the current user first we'll have to get the auth state i'm gonna get auth state from authentication state provider which is an async method i'm gonna get that and i if i try to use an await keyword here we'll have to wait for that user id we can't just call this method and not wait for the user id but if i use await here then it's going to throw an error saying that you'll have to change your method modifier to async task and if i change that then my ilogger interface is going to scream at me so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run this whole code block in a different thread i'm going to use task run to run this on a different thread and just fire and forget it so that we don't have to worry about what it's async and what's not so i'm gonna create a method which i'm going to call whenever this new thread is getting fired and then i'm gonna make this method as async and then i can use await keyword in my in my code i can even await this where maybe i call if i had to so now you can see that i'm getting authentication state async i would also like to get the user's information from that so i'm gonna store user in a variable here or let's directly store user id here so here i would like to get auth state i would like to get auth state dot user dot find first and here i'll have to pass the claims type so if i go to my custom authentication state provider here i am storing names identifier claims name names identifier as that user's user id and this is what i would like to get in order to store user id in the logs so i'm going to say claims type dot names identifier and then i'm going to say Live here which is going to be a string property and we would like to convert that convert that to in 64 and that will get stored in my user id and then i can set user id for the log and then i can say this is the user id so this is how you can get the user ID 
of your current user on the client project and store that into logs. Let's run our application and see if that works or not. Now I'm gonna go to my application and I'm gonna log in with Julius Caesar, no John Smith, and then I'm gonna go to my contacts page. Now I'm getting an exception here. Now if I refresh my results, you can see that the exception which is getting on the server side is storing the user ID and the exception which is getting on the client side is also storing the user ID. If I go to my settings page where I'm only throwing exception on the client project and then refresh my database here, you can see that on the client project, we're getting object not set to an instance of an object for user ID 10. And that's what the exception I am throwing on my settings page. If you go to my settings page on uninitialized, I'm throwing that exception and I'm using global exception handler in order to process that error. Let's try to log in with someone else. I'm gonna try and log in with Julius Caesar and then go to contacts page and then go to settings page. So we are getting two exceptions on contacts and settings page. One is happening on the server side and another is happening on the client side. If I refresh my page, you can see that one error is happening for Julius Caesar on the server side and one error is happening on the client side. So this is how you can log users user ID so that it's easier for you to filter through the logs, the log staple and try and figure out what exactly happened for that particular user pretty quickly so that you can answer your clients pretty quickly. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook, or you can ask those questions in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.